Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 19. Reads as follows. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. This morning we just want to speak to you on this this topic, amen, that the Lord has blessed us with, that simply says this, prayers extended impact. Prayers extended impact. Now what is the meaning of extended impact? Well, brothers and sisters, extended impact means lasting longer than what is considered normal or typical. Extended impact also means having a far-reaching influence, a prolonged effect, or continued application. Now we know that prayer has an extended impact because the prayers of the matriarchs and patriarchs and pilgrims and people who have passed by, who have passed on and who have passed over, play a persistent role in our past, our present, and in our future. Prayer's extended impact causes us to be what is known as posthumous heirs. Now what is posthumous and who is a posthumous heir? Posthumous means occurring after somebody's death. Athletes and entertainers and public servants and soldiers and other people who have received awards and medals of valor posthumously. A months and years after their death. That is what is called posthumous. When somebody has passed years before, it could be months before, but they are not there to receive an accolade or acknowledgement of something, they call that a posthumous award. Now what is a posthumous heir? Who is a posthumous heir? A posthumous heir is someone who is born after the death of the patriarch. And they are the beneficiary, they are the inheritor, and they are the recipient of a desire, of a right, of property, of a position, of a title, or a tradition. Uh, Children of family members who receive an award or benefit after the death of a parent or a relative is a posthumous heir. All of us in here today, whether we believe it or not, are posthumous as. Yes. Something that our grandparents or great grandparents or parents that they developed, that they grew, that they purchased, and that they raised up and created, we are the beneficiaries yes. of what they've done. Yes. They are the beneficiaries of what they sweated for and what they died for. We are the heirs of that. Yes. And a lot of times our generation just doesn't understand. A lot of the things that they have today is because of what somebody else did who has gone on a long time ago. We have been and are still around because of what our grandparents asked the Lord to be and do for us. We have been and still are beneficiaries of our parents bowing down in prayer for us. We have been and are still are continuing on because they called on God in prayer for us. We have been and still are kept because they kneeled in prayer for us. We have been and are still recipients of right rewards because of their prayer request to God the Father for us. The reason why we are here today is because those old folks had sense enough, they always said this, and spirit enough to pray for us. We always talk about old school and how they didn't have the best education or they didn't write or they couldn't read, they couldn't do all these things, but one thing they could do, they knew how to pray. And in the midst of all of those prayers, they didn't just ask God to take care of them. It was common for them to say, Lord, take care of my children. Watch over my children when they don't have sense enough to watch over themselves. God, my children, when they don't have sense enough to God themselves. Give my, my children direction when they don't have direction for themselves. That's what they pray for us. And a lot of them will say this, when I'm long gone, watch over my children for me because I can't do it for myself. Contained within the Holy 
scriptures are evidence of prayer's extended impact and the prayers of the patriarchs and matriarchs who are approximately being present and perfected. Old Testament example of this is David's prayer to God regarding Solomon and his reign over Israel. Long before David died, and before David died, David made provisions for Solomon to do what was in his heart to do. Yes. Notice what the scripture says in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verses 18 to 19. It said, David prays, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee, and give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which of I have made provision. And so it was in David's heart to build a house for God. God told David, I never told you to build a house for me. I didn't ask you to build a house for me. But since you want to build a house for me, and since it's in your heart to build a house for me, I'm going to let you build this house for me. But you can't build a house because there's too much blood on your hands. And so your son Solomon will build my house for me. And so since God told David, you can't build a house, David said, well, since I can't build a house, Lord, at least give me the design and allow me to get all the provisions set up so when the time comes for Solomon to build your house, everything will already be there. So Solomon didn't have to call nobody. He didn't have to call no contractors. He didn't have to put aside any goods. He didn't have to set aside any money. Everything that was ready and needed to be done, David set it aside. And all Solomon had to do was follow the plan. Yes, that's all right. Knowing what the scripture said in Second Solomon, Second Chronicles, chapter one and verses seven through nine, it said the prayer of David is possibly present and perfected. Notice what it says. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David, my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. For thou hast made me king over people like the dust of the earth in multitude. And so Solomon recognized that the reason why he was there was not because of what he had done, but because of the prayer of David his father. And now that even though David was dead and David was gone, God was allowing him to fulfill the prayer and the request of his father. He had sense enough to recognize that everything that I'm doing, everything that I have in my steed right now is not because I'm so good, not because I'm so high, so righteous, but because of my daddy, David. Now a New Testament example is provided by the prayer that Jesus rendered to God in John chapter 17. In his prayer, Jesus says this, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Now notice, Jesus didn't say, I'm praying for the world. He said, I'm praying for those people who you have given me who are in this world. But notice what Jesus says in verse 11. He's still here, but he's talking like he's gone. Now, now he's saying a prayer, he's alive. But he's talking now as if he's not even here. Notice what he says. He says, I am no longer in the world. Notice, he's in the world, but he's saying, I'm no longer in the world. In other words, he said, I'm gone now, but he's still here. I am coming to you. But these are still in the world, Holy Father. Keep those you have given to me in the power of your name. Then will they be one, even as we are one. Notice, he's still here, but he's talking like he's not here. So he's saying, Father, after I'm gone, make sure those who come after me are still one with us. Notice what else he says. But now I come to you, Father. I say these things, notice, while I am in the world, in this way, my followers may have my joy in their hearts. And so he's saying it before he leaves. So after he leaves, he didn't say that my followers would be sad. He says that my followers will have joy. 
ma my uncle. Yes, Lord. Used to call him Uncle Boys, and they talked about how strong he was. <laughs> but it would get to me to see a strong man, as strong and big as he was, when he would pray. He would pray for not just himself, not just for the church, not just for his son, but he would pray for all his nieces and nephews and children to come. And this is what he would say, Lord, I'm praying for my nieces and my nephews. Lord, tell them that hell is too high and eternity is too long. And I didn't understand what he was trying to do now. But he said, Lord, let them know that hell is too high and eternity is too long. And so even though he's gone now, the prayer that he prayed was to keep us from going to hell, but to lift us up to hell. He was worried about us and worried about our soul. And he's getting on his knees asking God to watch over us. The reason why I'm standing here today is the prayers of my uncles and aunts and other people who prayed for me not to go to hell, but for me to see hell. Notice what the Lord says. My followers do not belong to the world. Just as I do not belong to the world. Notice what he says. Make them holy for yourself by the truth. And then how do we get made holy? He said, your word is truth. And so people fight and they, 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 they push back against God and say, well, can't nobody be holy? Well, that's, that's not true. How can I be holy? He said, well, your holiness is right here. In His Word is our holiness. When we follow His Word and we are true to His Word, we are holy. Some people try to say they're holy, but you know they're not holy because they're not following His Word and there's no truth in them. Amen. Come on, Holy Ghost. Now, there are some particular points that we must reveal regarding the posthumous impact of the prayers of our patriarchs and matriarchs. Yes. First thing we want to reveal. Yes. Our patriarchs and matriarchs' prayers possibly bring about perseverance. Now, what's perseverance? Well, perseverance means a determined continuation. Yeah. In other words, it's what the old folks used to call determination. Yeah. Yeah. I'm determined, Lord, to run on. Yeah. I'm determined to keep on keeping on. Yeah. I'm determined not to turn around. Yeah. I'm determined to let the Lord be my guide. I'm determined to do what the Lord tells me to do. I'm going too far yes, Lord. to turn back now. Yeah. They pray for us to have that type of perseverance. Yes. Perseverance is a steady and continued action of belief. It's, it's over a long period of time, and especially despite difficulties or setbacks. In other words, prayer got our parents through, and prayer will get us through. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you, you know that this generation, they all, you hear a lot of times you hear them saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I guarantee you the ones who make that statement haven't gone to God in prayer. Because whenever we would make that statement around our parents, whenever we would make that statement around our grandparents or somebody who knew God, this is what they would tell us. Baby, go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will fix it for you. But you got to take it to Him. If you take it to Him, everything will be all right. Second thing that we have to reveal today. Our patriarchs and matriarchs' prayers posthumously encourage possibilities. Possibilities means the potential for a successful future, for development, for likelihoods, for opportunities, for prospects, and for promise. Put another way, because of their prayers, we know that prayers change things. We know that prayer will fix it for us. We know that prayer will work it out for us. They let us know there's possibilities in prayer. If you don't pray, there's no possibility that nothing's going to change. If you don't pray, there's no possibility that it's going to get fixed. If you don't ask somebody to pray, if you don't know how to pray, there's no chance that anything's going to happen for you. So prayer opens the door of possibilities for us. The third thing 
sending our patriarchs and matriarchs prayers possibly does in, in producing power. Think about it. Whenever we were down, whenever we were weak, pray on it, baby. Yes, Lord. Whenever we couldn't feed, pray on it, baby. That's right. Their prayers infused in us the ability, the strength, and the capacity to do something. When you think you can't do it, when you need strength to get up and stand and speak for the Lord, what do you see people do? Go down and pray. When Daniel had to find the answer for the king, and he didn't know it, he went to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he said, let's pray that God will give us the answer and will reveal to us what we need to know. Not only that we don't die, but the same people that wasn't even praying to God so they wouldn't die. Think about it. Not only did that prayer save Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but those foolish wise men and all those others didn't know how to call on God, they were saved as well because the king had given a decree. If you can't tell me what my dream is, everybody, your musicians, the, the, the soothsayers, everybody's going to die. It imparted energy. It gave might. And it gave vigor to us. You ever understood and never realized a lot of times when you were going through something? And sometimes you may have had one friend say he didn't know how to pray for himself. He was just so weak. He just didn't have the strength to pray. And people got around him and prayed for him. And all of a sudden you feel your strength coming back. And uh, you say, well, you know, for some reason... I was down yesterday, but I'm feeling better now. I don't know what went on, but I feel a whole lot better today. Not realizing the reason you feel better today is because somebody prayed for you. Fourth thing. Our patriarch and matriarch's prayers possibly motivate progression. Put another way, their prayers prompted our gradual change, our advancement from one state to another, and our movement forward and on. All of us in here today, the way we move from being sinners to being saved by grace, we have to go to God in prayer. Remember thinking what y'all said, grandmother told you, you're 12 years old now. You got to pray for yourself. I done talked to the Lord and asked the Lord to keep you. And I asked the Lord to protect you. But now you got to pray for yourself. But, but notice she tried to give y'all a little incentive. She said, if y'all go down in prayer and go ask the Lord to save you, I'll buy a suit for you. <laughs> think about this now. Y'all were thinking, mm, if I pray, you're not thinking about your soul being saved and you getting Jesus Christ out of this thing. You're thinking, I'm going to get a suit out of this thing. The suit wasn't for you so much. The suit was her faith and belief. 
judgment that brings about prosperity. That means that the plea of our grandparents and parents have enabled us to receive and experience the benefits and the blessings and the favor and the privileges of being a peculiar, picked out and precious pilgrims of the Lord. The reason why you still stand. The reason why you still move. The reason why you got a roof over your head. The reason why you got grandkids and great grandkids. The reason why you still looking good at a young age and the age that you are. And people wonder why you still look as good as you do. That prosperity that comes from prayer. That comes from being prayed for by people. God responds to those prayers. When you say, Lord, keep me. Watch over me. Hold me, Lord. Sustain me. Keep me strong, Lord. Lord, if you save my soul from the gates of hell, I'll serve you the balance of my days. Well, guess what? God got to keep you up in order for you to meet that balance. If you're falling apart, you can't serve the balance of your days. But God will give you strength and power and understanding. A lot of times when they leave this, it says it's black don't crack up, or beauty is on the skin deep, and it's in the genes, it's in the prayer. Prayer keeps you. Prayer guides you. Prayer makes you beautiful. Prayer gives you the strength to still walk on and do what you do. I see not here today, but Leola, that, that, that same thing, and even with my mom, that same thing, that prayer and that power and that prosperity. When I get 92. That, 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 that power, that, that prayer of the old folks telling you in your spirit, it don't matter what it is. God going to give you the strength to do what it is you need to do. Uh, a lot of times, I remember this, my mama didn't shout the way she shot her when she was 22, but she still had some shout in her. Succumb to society's seduction to play instead of pray. Everybody, like I said, everybody wants to be a player. But they don't understand at some point the games run out. Don't be like the people who find and make time to play family and friends. Instead, be the person who finds and make time to pray for family and friends. That's the one thing that's missing in our world today. No matter what the situation, everybody's so busy trying to play everybody. Nobody's praying for anybody. And then they wait till they get in trouble. And they play for so long that when it's time for them to pray, they can't do it. They say, well, will you pray for me? Wait a minute. You coming to me and saying, I need your prayers. You know you need prayers. But this is the important thing. I can pray for you. You can pray for me. But if I don't pray for myself. That's why grandmother said that. She said, sir, I done prayed for you. But now you got to get a line open with God. You got to get on the main line for yourself. You got to call him up and tell him what you want. You got to tell him thank you. I've been telling him thank you for you, but you got to do this for yourself because one day I'm not going to be around if you wait for you. We have to render prayers that have an extended impact on our children and on our children's children. Render prayers that have an extended impact on this generation and the generations to come. The lyrics of an old church song say this. Somebody prayed for me. Kept me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. And this is the response. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Our brothers and sisters, let us reflect on these lyrics and, and what power shared in our subjects versus 
regarding prayer and extending impact. Yes. Always keep your heart and keep in your heart yes. and keep in your mind yes. that because somebody prayed for you and me, we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love for all Christians. Yes. Because somebody prayed for you and me, the great God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the wisdom of His Spirit. The reason why we know God is and we know God answers prayer is because of prayer. Yes, Lord. Because somebody prayed for you and me. We are able to understand the secrets about the Lord and know Him better. Because somebody prayed, Lord, let my child know you. Yes. Let my child get to know you. Yes. Because as the old people said, I know Him for myself. Yes. But you need to get to know Him. Yes. Do you know the man? Yes. Call upon the man. Yes. When you get to know the man, yes. you'll call upon him, you'll shout about him, you'll, you'll say, I have somebody I'm on my yes. side. Yes. Yes. Because somebody prayed for you and me. Yes. Our hearts are able to understand because somebody prayed for you and me. Yes. We know about the hope given by God's call because somebody prayed for you and me. Yes. We see how great the things are that God has promised to those who belong to Him. Because they pray for us, we get the promises that God has given. Yes. Right. Promise me, Lord, that you watch over my child. Yes. He does it. Yes. Promise me, Lord, you'll keep my child. He's done it. Yes. Promise me, Lord, you'll lift up my child. He does it. Yes. Promise me, Lord, that you'll feed my child. He does it. Yes. The same prayer that raised Christ from the dead will raise us. The same power that put Christ at God's right hand in heaven will put us in heaven. And because somebody prayed for you and me, the same God who filled Jesus and who filled all things everywhere with himself, the same God does that with us and will fill us. The same spirit that lives in Jesus Christ, the same spirit God put in us. The same spirit that gave him compassion, he put it in us. The same spirit that made Jesus cry when he went to the grave of life, it's the same spirit he put in us. All of that is possible. All of that is done. Because they prayed for us. And my brothers and sisters, because the matriarchs and the patriarchs and the, the pilgrims and the people who passed by, who passed on, who passed over, prayed for you and prayed for me. We have the blessing, we have the experience, and we have the, re the reward. Yes, Lord. Or what we want to call prayers, extended impact. Yes, Lord. Why do we look so good today? Pray. Why are we able to stand today? Prayer. Yeah. What's keeping us day by day? Prayer. Prayer. What's leading us, guiding us, and lifting us day by day? Prayer. What puts joy in our heart? A song on our lips? Prayer. What put shouting in our hands and in our feet and in our body to go on and say, Lord, thank you for being so good. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah. King of my life, master of my life. Prayer. Yeah. The Lord has. And so when you think about how far prayer can reach, when you say you pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground, all that was done because somebody prayed for us. And more importantly, because Jesus prayed for us. He said, Father, keep them, protect them, guide them, unite them. Let them love one another. Let them show love to one another. Let them know what love is. Yeah. And that is what has kept us. Yes. And so it's imperative for us as children of God not just to pray for ourselves but to pray for one another. Amen. And we have to pray for our children just like the people pray for us. Not just our children but help us Holy Ghost. Yeah. We got to pray for the children in this world. Yes, Lord. Because if we don't do it, my Lord. Is, the devil sure ain't going to do it. Because the only thing he wants to do is play his game. But when we pray to God, 
the devil game get cast aside. I don't play no more. I was, I was I once was a child. I thought I was a child. I did the things that a child did. But once I became in Jesus Christ, I threw away childish things. I put away foolish things. I grew up in the Lord. And so now I know what it is I need to do. I don't want to play no more. But I will pray every chance I get. Because the more I pray, the more power I get, the more prosperous I get, the more understanding I get, the more strength I get, the more joy I get. And the more I pray, yeah. the more I get. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So if you want it, you got to pray. And when you pray, He gonna give you what you want. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Yeah. And then He said, then and then all things shall be added yeah. unto you. Stop trying to get the plus, and you ain't even done the necessary thing yet. Yes, Lord. How can you add yes, when you don't even know how to work out the problem? Right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Give God the praise. Amen. Give God the praise because He sent His Son and His Son prayed for us. And those prayers, even though Jesus died but got up early one Sunday morning, caught a cloud and went back to glory. The prayer He prayed over 2,016 years ago is reaching out and touching us here right now.